Hey, what's up everybody? Wicked here and in today's video, we're going to be discussing and reviewing Akaba's beat for the PlayStation 4. Let's dive right into it. And I wanted to start off by asking a question. Have you ever played a game that you thought was going to be really good because it takes a lot of ideas from other games, but it just turns out to be really, really mid? Well, this is the perfect example of this. Akaba's beat takes so many different elements from different games and tries to implement it in its own way, but it completely falls flat on every single aspect it's trying to do. Let's start with the story here. So the story is pretty much you're this guy who has no job, no nothing. He doesn't want to do anything with the world, the real world. He just cares about his anime, his games and stuff. And yeah, sure, some of us can relate, but honestly, He's such a boring main character, I didn't even remember his name for most of it. But he gets dragged into this world called Delusions. Pretty much, if a character or person has a high enough like fantasy in a way, they create their own little world where they're the star and stuff. Everything's going their way. It kind of reminds me of what Persona 5 did with the um, jails and stuff like that. The palaces in that game, but it's just all on a much lesser scale and not nearly as good. And the story just never picks up. It does some cool things towards the middle that I was not expecting with one of the main characters, but I'm not going to spoil that for the people that want to play this game. But other than that, they do nothing spectacular in the story. It's a very generic anime tropey story. You won't get anything out of it that you have not seen a million times before. And that goes the same with the characters. Let's just jump right into the characters here. I don't remember any character besides one. And that's because she was like the main character. And the plot twist with her was actually really well executed. And that's the only reason I remember her. Other than that, they're all standard, generic, tropey characters. You've seen them so many times before. I will say they do a good job exploring their characters a little bit more. Because you have these little character side quests you can do. And by doing that, you get to learn about the characters a little bit more. It's a little bit fun. I will say I did have fun doing that. All their funny shenanigans they've been doing is really cool. But other than that, they're kind of bland. And they don't really connect together. Like They don't feel like one coherent group like other JRPGs. You know, the party at the end of it feels like they're all meant to be there. And honestly, they just feel like single characters grouped together just for the sake of being grouped together. And I don't like that. It's really not that great. So like the story is really mid, generic tropey. Characters, generic tropey, but you can enjoy them if you find one character or two very interesting. Other than that, they're not that great. Let's talk about the gameplay, which is admittedly the best part of this game. But that's not saying much when the game is not that good at all. If you've ever played a Tales of game, specifically Tales of Exilia, you know what this combat is. It's literally picked from that game to a T. You do the same type of attacks, you have the same type of combos you can do with your characters. Everything is literally the same as in that game, but it's stripped down in some ways because you don't have the linked attacks, you don't have linked arts and stuff. You don't do all that cool stuff like they do in that game. And it just feels a lot more clunky. Like it doesn't feel nearly as fluid. The combos and stuff don't really feel like they connect as well. It's just Tales of Exilia combat watered down and that's one of the worst things you can do because that game had fantastic combat and when you try to copy it and take from it you expect a good game but this was awful it was just so clunky to play i just i don't know they do have their own form of mystic arts that are kind of cool but again they just look they look cool but they're really lackluster because they don't really do that much damage and this is i don't know that's just another problem in this game. The damage you do is just not that great. It does not look flashy. It does not look fun or anything. So that's really bad. 
And to say that's the best part of the game is not saying much. The music is pretty good. If you like techno anime music, you will like the music in this game. And if you didn't know, the main setting is Akihabara. So you can expect that in this game really, really heavily. I will say that's pretty cool. The setting I like, it's like a real world setting, but in video game form, that's pretty neat. The exploration, like I said, you go into these dungeons that are called delusions. And if you played Persona 4 and used their dungeons, it's pretty much the same thing. Just their little spin on it. And it's, I don't know, it's not that fun. It's really not. The exploration's pretty boring. It's narrow hallways, no puzzles, no nothing really to do in the game. And that's the biggest problem with this game is they try to do so many things from other games and they just fail in every aspect. But if you like tropey anime nonsense, a fun but clunky battle system, and pretty okay music, I guess you guys will enjoy this game. Akuma's Beat, you get a good one and a half, maybe two out of five stars. On a buy, wait for sale, or skip, easily you guys should skip this unless you need your fix of Tales of, clunky combat, and generic anime tropes guys i want to thank you all for watching this video if you like this video hit that like button if you want more jrpg content make sure you subscribe i got a let's play of chain echoes on the channel a new video every single day at 10 a.m of that and i also have other reviews coming up soon so look forward to that again thank you all for watching and remember guys stay wicked